personality is defined as the unique patterns of thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that make us, us. It's a profound concept that influences so much of our lives. It's clear why psychologists have spent so much time studying it. But how can we study it? How can we take something so big and quantify it scientifically? The first tests that were used to try to scientifically measure personality were projective tests, which were designed to reveal people's deepest feelings, impulses, and desires by showing people ambiguous images or phrases, and then asking people to tell a story, interpret an image, or complete a sentence. Theorists hoped that these unfamiliar and sometimes strange tasks would encourage test takers to reveal unconscious aspects of their personality. The most famous projective test is the Rorschach inkblot tests, where people are presented with a series of cards with ambiguous inkblots on them and asked, what might this be? Other projective tests include the thematic apperception task, or TAT, which asks people to tell a story based on black and white images of people, and the Rotter incomplete sentences blank, which asks people to complete partial sentences like, when I was a child, or I need. These projective tests were historically very popular and are still familiar to us today because of the distinct role that they play in cartoons and movies. But they lack reliability and validity. Today, most psychologists assess personality using objective questionnaires that were developed and tested on large and diverse samples of people. These objective personality tests avoid the ambiguity of projective tests and instead use questions that have clear response options and are continuously tested to verify their reliability and validity. One example is the NEO Personality Inventory, or NEOPI, a personality inventory that examines the big five personality traits. The NEOPI has been given to a large and representative sample of the population, including individuals of different age ranges, ethnicities, and cultural backgrounds. And scores on this test are consistent over time. Another commonly used test is the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, or MMPI. This test requires people to answer a series of true-false questions that correspond to 10 traits, which are measured on a scale. The MMPI also includes four validity scales, which help to indicate whether a respondent is trying to make themselves look better or worse than they really are. One well-known test is the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, MBTI, which you might be familiar with if you've ever taken an internet quiz. This test sorts people according to Carl Jung's theories of personality, leading them to be categorized along a continuum of extroversion and introversion, sensing versus intuitive, thinking versus feeling, and judging versus perceiving. These are combined to create 16 different personality categories that are titled by their corresponding acronym. So someone who is introverted, sensing, feeling, and perceiving would be an ISFP. This test is popular online, but it's often used in the workplace or to help people choose careers. That said, the evidence for this test is actually really weak, and it's not at all supported by modern research. For example, it has major issues with test-retest reliability. I took this test last week and it said I was an ENTJ, but when I took it here, surrounded by people and lights and cameras, I got a much different answer, INFP. Still neurotic, I guess. So even though this test is popular, it's not one that's seriously used by clinicians. Sorry, folks.